former Seattle residence, comedian Sarah Colonna and her husband, John Ryan, who, if you remember, was the Seahawks punter number nine in uniform, number one in our hearts. And you guys are always spiritually Seattleites, correct? Yes. Definitely. Absolutely, 100%. So there's marriage, and then there's quarantine marriage. <laughs> How's yeah. How's it going? <laughs> I mean, it's good, right? Yeah, no, it's going good. It's been kind of nice because we, you know, I, I'm still playing football, so I'm away for half the year usually. So we've never spent this much time together, really, and it's been quite nice. Yeah, no, it's good. I, I joke, but um, it's true. It's like he's, he's, he's actually home. Like he's forced to be home, and I'm forced to be home. So we're used to traveling and going out. So there's that change there for sure, but it's good so far. So what are you doing differently? And I ask this because I am now. For some reason, I've like launched into this thing where I'm saving every scrap of paper and using every bit of it. And I'm yelling at people on TV not to touch anything. And <laughs> I, you know, there's just lots of stuff that, that you take in really quickly. So what, what are you doing that's sort of stay at home related that you've never done before? Uh, what do you think? Um, you know, we, for the most part, we've kind of stayed to our normal routine. You know, we st we're lucky enough to have a gym here so we can still work yeah. out. Which amazing for us because without that you know especially when I'm trying to prepare for a year it'd be it'd be pretty tough but um you know just taking the proper precautions that everyone is you know I think you know I've only left the house a couple times in the last 15 days <laughs> good uh, you know just you know washing your hands and just keeping a distance when you, when you are around people yeah when I go to the grocery store I come home and I definitely like after taking bags off the counter I wipe everything down again with Lysol and Pledge and then Mostly we just have, we've just noticed, we try to make sure we don't start drinking until at least five. <laughs> now that's discipline. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I would do if I had a home gym? What? I'd ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> I would pretend that I did not have it. But you can't really do that, John, because you've got CFL stuff to get ready for, and your training camp has been delayed, right? So what does that do to the whole preparation? Uh, it, it messes with your head a little bit. You know, you're, you're preparing for something. Usually kind of, you're preparing, you have a kind of a, a deadline to when you have to be in a certain shape in or, or what uh, what date you have to be ready for. And now that date's kind of elusive. You don't really know when training camp's going to open. And it would normally open in the middle of May. And now it's been pushed back, but they don't know how far. So it's a little bit weird training for something that you don't really know uh, when it's going to happen. But you can't stop, right? Because it will happen eventually. Yes, exactly. So you got to, uh, you know, stay in shape and keep up with it. I can fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now that we've discussed our sweatpants and our, our lounge sets and all of that, there's just a whole wardrobe that goes with this. Um, John, do you think we'll have an NFL season? I do. You know, I think, uh, you know, I think right now everything's up in the air. But, you know, I think that I, I'm hoping that things start to clear up over the summer and that there is a, a, an NFL season. It's, it's so hard to think of a, a, a fall without NFL, you know, just I know. Like right, right now and, you know, in the beginning of April, we have no March Madness, no opening day for baseball. Uh, it's rough, but with that being said, you know, everyone's got to stay home. So eventually these things will come back. So, Sarah, I know you're a sports fan also, and no sports, you know, people, of course, put that in perspective with all the things, the tragic things that are going on. But on the other hand, sports has been such a community touchstone around here and everywhere and a place um, where people of all kinds of different backgrounds can meet and find each other rooting for something together. What do yeah. you think the, the hole that's left by sports looks like for people? I mean, it is a big one because like like you said, in perspective of what's going on, obviously this is what we need to do, but it is just a thing that makes you like, it is, John had season tickets to the Mariners when he lived there and, and there was nothing better than going to that ballpark. And, you know, um, I was, I'm an Angels fan because I grew up in LA, but I would it's get okay. to see them. Yeah, I know, uh, but, I, but I would get to see them, you know, they played each other all the time, they're both in the West. So we had to go to so many games and, and by far, uh, I would say, uh, the Mariner Stadium was like one of my favorite stadiums. So it's just that that you know, it's just that sitting outside and and having your beer and seeing all everyone rooting for you know, it's it's just it's hard. It's a hard thing I think for people to miss out on. Even if you just watched it at home, I think if people right now are like, just I don't know, would love to would love to have anything televised. What was what, what did you see the other day on ESPN? Because they don't have any sports really. 
Uh, I saw airplane racing. Airplane racing and I watched some bowling. Yeah. Horse racing. You watched oh. the bowling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a cor there was a cornhole contest oh, or right. something that they were they were like we're just gonna air that so. Uh, you know, they're definitely trying. I'm sure it's challenging for all the sports stations right now, too. You remember the news anchor, Dennis Bounds, who's a, a huge car racing fan, and he tells me he's watching old DVRs of NASCAR out in his garage, which I think <laughs> should be an ESPN show, watching <laughs> Dennis watch the races. I watched that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've been eating tons of chicken pot pies and Walker's um, shortbread cookies. Is there anything special on the menu? Well, at now your house? chicken pot pie is yeah. that you said that because that sounds really good. Are you it making is. them? Do you make them? Oh no, no, oh, no. Okay, okay. I was, I was about <laughs> no. to be like, I don't even know how that happened, but I'll I'll go pick some up. Somebody uh, named Marie Calendar does it. Yeah, we do in a lot of. Uh, we try to keep like Taco Tuesdays alive, and I make like. I make tacos. I'm not a great cook, but it's just basically out of a package, you know, package seasoning and some chicken or beef. And uh, is there anything else it's weird that we're, is there anything else on the menu? No, really. We're trying to, trying to support local businesses as much as we can while uh, still like trying to stay in shape. So, <laughs> you know, we're still ordering out uh, quite a bit, but at the same time, Sarah's been cooking a lot too. So we try to balance that with supporting the small businesses, but also uh, not getting gross at home. Yeah. yeah, that's super sure. important. Yeah, that's a good reminder that we can order out, we can take out, we can do so safely and support businesses that really need it. Um, they Sarah, do, for yeah. you, enter, being an entertainer and you know having tour dates and that kind of thing, none of that's going on now. Um, do you perform shows at home? I mean, how do you sort of <laughs> keep tuned for what happens next? It's hard. You know, that's a really hard thing because a lot of people are like, oh, you're probably getting so much material and it's like, you are, but at one point you're also not getting to perform it, so you don't get to like work it out, you know? Um, so it's gonna be interesting when we're all allowed to actually perform and, and do that again, that I think, I mean, well, I, I know every comedian I know is gonna be super excited to be able to do it. Um, it starts to feel a little bit like Groundhog Day, you know, <laughs> kind of repetition over and over again. So like I said, it's important to do things that we normally do, like talk with you, but just little things like that to, to remind you that there's there's other things going on besides what's inside these four walls. Well, we basically do Taco Tuesday just to remind ourselves that it's Tuesday. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of repetition, um, I would like to point you, John Ryan, to a tweet you recently put up where you used your famous touchdown pass face and you wrote, when you find out you have at least another 30 days of social distancing. Any comments on the reuse of that photo and your feelings about that iconic facial expression? I love it, I love it. I don't think I'd be embarrassed of it. I, I, I tweet it, I Instagram it all the time. I think it was, uh, you know, it was one of the, it was the best, my best moment as a Seahawk. And so uh, I was kind of, even though it was kind of funny, <laughs> made a bad face, I loved it. So uh, I still, you know, spread it around. It's a good memory. I think yeah. people like to see it, so. <laughs> I know you guys are, are very attached to Seattle as we are to you. And there's some people who come through town who are just here for a while and they leave. And then there are other people that we really take in as our own and you two are among those. And so I'm wondering what you might uh, say in terms of solidarity with Seattle as we go through what we're going through. And I know you guys are, are having similar problems in California. Uh, for me, it's just, you know, I hadn't been in Seattle for a little bit and I went back uh, this December and just instantly I felt like I was I was home. You know, I just right when I got there, I felt home again. People embraced us, come up to talk to us. And I think that's just what Seattle is. It, just, it feels like home. It's such a great sense of community, even though it's a really big city. It's very, very tightly knit, you know, and um, I just I, I just can't wait for to get back there when this all clears up and kind of have that feeling of oneness of wholeness again. Yeah, it's very true. Seattle is, um, you know, I wasn't there as long as him, but the time that I spent there, I fell in love and met the people and um, I'm gonna get emotional. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> everyone's going through tough times. So just like, you know, stay home, be safe, social distance, because then this will pass. And, uh, you know, definitely thoughts to the people that are, are either sick or, or, you know, having loved ones that are sick. And um, we send you our love for that too. And we love you guys back. Thank you. When we come back, Cisco Morris is going to be here, and he's going to show us an ornamental garden to brighten up our lawns. We'll be right back.